Okay, so the recording did start. All right, so welcome everyone to the May 2023 Interlibrary Loan Roundtable. Today we are going to be talking about the results of the um, Interlibrary Loan Paperwork Survey. We did have 101 responses, so it was a lot of people responded and that makes the data really helpful. Um, the comments really just have to be read through. There was, I haven't had a chance to like summarize them nicely. Um, I was honestly a little surprised at how many people said they don't like the double-sided labels because they sometimes put them in with the wrong side out and then the item just comes right back to them, um, which is not a conundrum I had thought of. And there's a solid number of people who don't want any paperwork uh it's it's just a huge variety in responses but what i wanted to do was start by sharing my screen because i can show you um nice little charts that actually for the checkoff portions will show you what people said in an easier to parse out format Okay, is everyone seeing my screen? Okay, um, so the first question was, we just asked what paperwork do you currently include when you lend an item? And the most popular thing they include is the return label. 46% of people said they include that. Uh, next up was the due date slip. And the due date slip was one that I saw pop up in the comments a lot. So for people when they send out items it sounds like the return label and the due date slip are the tops most popular things to send out um i don't have a clear idea of other yet because i have to go through all of the information and then 17 percent of people print out the clover request which would ideally have the due date and the lending information um and we have a question in the chat. Due date slip meaning whatever prints from their <laughs> ILS. Yes. So I found that interesting. And I assume it's because a lot of them are set up to print the due date slip automatically. We don't print them here, so I wasn't sure. Um, it may be also a confusion of like what that meant. I wasn't yeah. sure what else it would be because there's no due date, anything that prints from Clover. So it would have to come from their ILS. Oh. Mm. Um, so the next question was, what is the most useful information to receive with your borrowed item? Um, and again, the tops was the return label. So even though there were a handful of people who said they don't need it, it's it is the most popular item to go out, and it is the one that is most useful for people who borrow items. And then the due date was the second one. So if we're looking at what information is sent out the most and what people find the most useful, the due date and the return label are tops in everyone's books. Um, the Clover request number was a little less popular for this. Uh, a lot of the comments said that that's easily found in Clover, so they didn't need it. Some people really liked having the barcodes. So when you print it out and it's got the barcodes, you can just scan it in your computer. A lot of people really like that. Um, yeah, and the comment about the Clover number, you can't look up items that are not part of your, if you're not lending or borrowing, so that's... Yeah, no um, one can, so even say it's the always, Clover you can, number. Right. Yeah. If you're so not listed as a lender up, or borrower, you can only do that if it's for you. Yeah. If it's for you, you or from you. Otherwise, you have to email me and then I can look it up. That's why I'm here. <laughs> um, so the next question was check off if you include any of these with the request, which is a printout of the request, the book strap, or the shipping label. I was trying to gauge 
how popular any of those formats are. And there's not a huge number of people who are using any of them. You'll see the most was 28 out of 101 respondents use the Clover shipping label. So 47% of the people who answered, but not a lot of the people taking the survey answered that they check off any of these. So the shipping label is the most popular of the three. But again, looking at the um, number of respondents, it's not a huge number of them. Um, and let's see. In the con in the chat, we've got Noreen says that she puts the due date on the inside of the book. So it's there. And then uh, Betsy and Bradford said, with the number of items that get confused between Bradford and Brandon, she always appreciates having that little bit of extra information, either the Clover information showing lender and borrower or the ILS printout with the same information. So I can see that. That goes for St. John's very Athenaeum as well with um, yeah. the confusion with the Academy. Yes. Um, every, uh, it seems Grace to, Stewart. It's going over. waves. Like every once in a while, you'll get like three items for them. Yeah. And yeah. There's been so there's been a notice sent out on the listserv, but again, like there's a lot of turnover in staff, so mm -hmm. sometimes people are not catching a message that was sent last spring, or that um, that we reached out. But now we're just sending things back, which is taking more time for the library. But that's the only way that. We cannot be responsible for the last mile delivery, unfortunately. Right. And we have... Um, and they don't pay for the... The Academy does not pay for the courier. They does do not, not. stop. And yeah, so that's the double checking of labels. But it's so easy to make, a, you know, our... It's confusing when you look it up. Same initials. Yeah. It is. <laughs> well, um... And Kelly also said the shipping printout is helpful, especially if no label was included. So, and you can use yes. that with the barcode too. Uh, the shipping okay. label, somebody wrote about why print out another form if there's already something with it, like maybe the shipping label. For mm -hmm. us, if we were giving it to a patron, it's not only the different kind of way it's set up, it's a little more user friendly for the patron, but it also gives the patron's name. So that's some right. benefit, um, but I could easily see that that, yeah, it's duplication. It's a waste of paper or, you know, like if the barcodes work, you know, why not yeah. just have one paper? But we have been consistent putting our own bookstrap over whatever is sent. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, so the last couple questions that can be put into a nice chart uh one of them was if you use the clover book straps and labels or other book straps that you create yourself do you attach them to the books and i realized that i probably um should have clarified do you do this as a borrower or as a lender um because i know some people put their own on when the item they're borrowing is at their library um and a lot of people put their own on for the item they lend. Um, for the most part, um, people said no. Almost as equal, people said yes. The other was um, comments. And I think some of them were just that they would take book straps off if they came in with them and keep them at the desk so that the patron doesn't lose them. And to be honest, that's what we do here. If it comes with a book strap, we take it off. We put the due date on there. We lend it out. They have to bring it back to us. Mm -hmm. And then we reattach the paperwork and return it. But we just have like a big accordion file and we file everything by title. Um, and that makes sense. And especially there was one library that said uh, maybe they're a school library, perhaps. Mm -hmm. that They're worried about the students taking that off and getting lost or destroyed like completely mm -hmm. understand just as long as it comes back that is helpful um yes. the way it came so it can be easily found um because we use that um bookstrap to check in the book easily and also right. identifies it as interlibrary loan um and yeah. also where it's going and that sort of thing and if you tuck it inside the book it's a little harder to find but at least it's with it um for the most part people do leave it um with the book but it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be on just as long as it comes back.
but it right. is helpful when a library does do some sort of bookstrap then we could just put ours on top and then we're not um we're just adding tape to other paper and right. we don't have to take more time to like do a full circle of paper or something like that um right um, and Logan said, same, if there's already a book strap, uh, I put ours over it. And he puts books, they put book straps on all of their ILLs. Um, and Noreen also puts the book strap right over the one that comes on it. And Wendy asked for some clarification. She says, a borrower, her book strap has a due date, which differs from the lender's book strap. Um, as I would go with the due date that is listed from the lender uh, because the lend the due date the lender gives you is the date that item is due back to you, not to the lender. It's in the interlibrary loan code. The due date written on it and on the request is the day it's due back to the borrowing library. <coughs> so I mean, if you really wanted to give your patron a slightly earlier due date, then you can, but it's not a requirement. And that goes for out-of-state loans as well? Yes, because that has to follow the national code, which is the same, which is why we changed ours to that. Yeah. All right. Let me jump back to... Oh, that makes it easier for us. I hope so. We did that I think change, April, we can't so hear you. No, did I hit the button? Can you hear me now? I can. Lee, you who can you can hear me? I can hear you. Okay, Marie can hear me. Adrian, did you too. lose audio? Adrian? Yeah, I think she lost audio because she can't hear any of us, I don't think. Oh no. Can you hear us yet? I don't think she can. Oh, no. Okay, so it's not me. Uh oh. Maybe yeah. logging off and logging back in. She may need. Oh, she replugged in her headset. Did that do the trick? I mean, if you have this little button, sometimes I hit that and it mutes everything. Oh, all solved. Perfect. <laughs> the little button. I usually end up like accidentally hitting it with my elbow and then everything goes quiet and I think the meeting paused. Um, <laughs> okay, so we'll go to the last um, checkbox um, question. April, um, before yes. you go on, that um, I think Wendy's question was if the lender perhaps didn't hit March shipped and the due date has advanced or changed, that might be the discrepancy. I'm not sure if that's the specific case. It could be anything, um, but that could be an issue with like, you know, if you process and send things out and you don't fix it with like this ship. Update is, your due date. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, if you do pending requests, um, like you printed it out and then next couple days it will advance um, the due date. And so then when the other person is printing out their book strap, it will go with what later it's fixed. So that could be the issue. Or it could be confusion of like things are handwritten or, you know, printed out mm -hmm. and changed, you know, after the fact or yeah, it could be a lot of different things. Um, well, well I, it I, also I, never hurts to send out a reminder that the due date that's on the item when you receive it is when it's due back to the borrowing library. So I can send a reminder for that, too. Okay. And it would be good to, like, yeah, to have that set. Well, that, because then when we print it out, like, we don't have to additionally handwrite it. on, And it's confusing also for when there are overdues because some libraries work on different, they have staff that work on different floors, for example, like us, um, or they're not close to the paperwork, so you can't really see. And I'm only seeing what's in Clover as the overdue, mm -hmm. whereas the library might have granted more time, which is great, but I don't know that. And then I'm calling a patron, like, saying, 
can I please have the item back, you know, at your earliest convenience when they do have time. So having right. those things match is helpful. Um, All right. Okay, so the last checkbox question was when you receive a requested item and it has a book strap or other paperwork, do you include that when the patron has the item? Um, and that one, about half of the people said yes. And I'm guessing that's you just include it and it's got the due date and everything on it or they add their own book strap right over it. Um, and 35 people said no and it's not quite half but it's still a pretty good chunk so it still seems uh fairly split between yes we leave it on there and no we keep it ourselves and some of the other ones were people saying we put our own information over it so um i am hoping to make a better document that gives all of the add other information and covers the responses for the other fields. I just have not put that all together in one document, which is why I sent out the full data for everyone. Um, I would say based on these responses that we could potentially modify the interlibrary loan best practices document to say that it's highly suggested you include the due date and the lender and the return label which lender and return label could just be the one thing but i'm i'm, on, I'm a little on the fence if people should include the clover request number i think there was a fair number of people who really appreciate having that or the barcode but i wanted to put that to the group since you are all the ones who came up with the best practices document, which I happen to have open here so that we can look it over. Um, we did last work on this in 2020, so it's a pretty good idea to look at it. Um, Noreen said she writes the clover number on the back of the mailing label, which I really liked. Um, one comment actually said that having a space to put the due date and the clover number right on the courier label when it's a courier item would be convenient. Um, it would cut down on the saving labels and would end up using more paper, but it does put it all in one spot. So that was another option. Um, it's an Susan says more information is better than too little. And Logan doesn't include the Clover number because it can be found in Clover, so it seems redundant to include it. I think the times when having the number included um, helps is if it was a multi-copy request, and that just helps find it a little bit quicker. Um, mostly because every once in a while with the multi-copy request, like it expires and moves on to a library, but then someone sends it anyway, and if you end up with duplicate request it just is a little bit weird um yeah duplicate requests are can be problematic we had a okay. number of them that were yeah we have a solution for that but now but um it's when the libraries don't respond to the status but then they send it anyway um which is mm -hmm. fine if i guess things get busy and um, but what happens in the system is Clover goes to the next library and then that library sends it as well. And then we have two books. And we only have one need. And if it's a mail library, we're also paying more money and more expense. And then yeah. also the clarification, like what if one book comes earlier than the other book, but it's not tied to the Clover exactly. record. And so it's not really connected with the library, but it, we got it first so we can have it for our patron first, you know, right. it's like it's confusing and um, it's a capacity issue, I'm sure. Um, I think a lot of it is. Um, yeah, which I And totally then some of it might just be new people. Some of it is, you know, once we hit vacation season, sometimes there's volunteers that are filling in and they just don't have the practice level. Yeah. Um, in, in the chat, we have Marie said she's a little surprised by the responses that say they toss the paperwork that comes with the item 
because doesn't the paperwork specifically say keep with this item or some such language? They usually do. And we also even bolded it in the best practices, which said if paperwork is included when it's received, make sure that it's included when it's returned. And if you have added your own bands or book straps, remove those before returning. So I was a little surprised by that one, too. Right. And um, sometimes I've highlighted that as well. Like if it's on the yeah. book strap, I highlight, please do not remove label. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, and Wendy said she recently made a slip with just the request number and the due date, and she puts it right in the front of the book. So that's also helpful. Uh, Wendy asked, are you referring to the library's three digit alphanumeric number or the transaction number of that loan? When I say the request number, I mean the transaction number. Uh, Clover code would be the three digit um, number. That's Sometimes it's is. four or more, um, but yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, well, actually, so that's the bin number. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Oops. <laughs> sorry but there's some there. confusion around that too. The bin number is only there for sorting oh. purposes in the warehouse. Um, Logan asked, how oh, often S22. do duplicate oh. requests happen? Um, it seems to come in waves, but typically the thing that has happened is a library forgot to mark it as shipped. So it expired from them and just moved on to the next lender. Um, and so that lender marks it as shipped. Um, but there's, there's a couple libraries I am keeping an eye on that um, I think just are not open very often, so they forget to update the status. Um, and Wendy says, we keep getting paperwork back that you don't need. Like, what kind of paperwork? Like, all of it. Well, when we, when we, when we fill a request, we print mm -hmm. out the paperwork. Mm-hmm and include it in the book because at one point at one of our ILL meetings, people were complaining that they didn't have the request number and the due date and all of the things that they needed. So I, the, I mean, it's all on the, that paperwork. So mm -hmm. I would just tuck that in, but because of the number of people that are tucking in paperwork that says, do not get rid of this. Now we're getting all of the, we're getting those back. Oh. <laughs> Because they're it's for them, and that's why I actually came up with the little slip, because mm -hmm. obviously I don't need the slip back. So, but that slip being in that item is informative in case the item gets lost on the way. Exactly. So if I get yes. one of your books and I'm not expecting it, then I know it. You know, I have an idea of whether it was on its way to the library that was borrowing it or back to you. Exactly. Exactly. So now it's just, you know, the little I've made the little slip, which of course is less paper and and that makes us all happy. But it still has the information that that people were requesting in the previous and we won't get as and we won't get that paper back. That makes sense. And I was the one that thought that it would be a good idea to just like add the, the stuff onto the onto the because yeah. it just it was like, well, you know, we're already sending those. Maybe that one extra step might help, but I mean, if I had a way where we could just print on demand labels that pulled in the courier information or a mailing label and the request number and due date, I'm still waiting for autographics to give me more free reign over customizing the shipping labels because that would solve, I think, a lot of the paperwork questions. Or at least, you know, the, have the, the, the book straps all be universal. Mm -hmm. with all well, the, you know, all well the they are, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I think, like, some people make like... their own book straps, actually. Oh. Um, then there's a few libraries that are part of the Sustainable Libraries Project, and they're moving away entirely from using any kind of paperwork. Yeah, we didn't have any paperwork before mm -hmm. that one meeting where they said they needed the information. And I was like, oh, really? Oh, okay. So <laughs> it was like we went from no paper to lots of paper, and now I'm trying to, you know, reduce more again. paper. Okay. I'm just trying to make everybody happy. 
<laughs> I mean, right, I also think printer paper too versus other ways. Yeah, I think like one of the solutions might be just to either if your ILS prints a due date slip, make sure that's in there because that will tell you who it's checked out to and what the due date is. Um, or I like Wendy's like smaller one that has the request number and the due date and tuck it in the book. So it sounds like smaller approaches are possibly easier. But again, it's going to depend on the library and the staffing and the process that works. So I think the the best solution we'll be able to have is to say like a list of two or three suggested pieces of information to include if possible when you're sending out an item. And I didn't know. Like the barcode is helpful, but not required. Um, yeah. The, the number is helpful. That does uh, multi-copy requests or sometimes Clover. So Clover is very odd in some ways when you're searching for a title, for example, it doesn't mm -hmm. include the article, but it does in the book straps. So why the inconsistency, I don't know, but putting in that number will get me to that record precisely, you know, right. so it's faster and it's even faster when I can scan it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, but it, again, it's like capacity issue. And I totally understand the, the printer issue. Um, right. And so when he says the barcode is why we print out our own book straps for our patrons. Um, uh, Kelly, your hands up. I'm not sure if you can see me. I think my camera's on. It is not. It is not. But Teams is a little tricky about that sometimes. Kelly, try turning your camera off and then back on again. No, it, it doesn't have your initials, so it's trying to connect. Do you have um, like one of the little sliders that goes over the camera? No, no, still can't see you. I can hear you fine now. Or I could. Oh, uh, Susan just put in the chat a great use for the piles of old summer reading bookmarks. Add the clover number, due date, and destination library and put that right in the. Oh, uh, right in the book. I like that solution. Uh, it looks like Kelly left, so she may have left to come back. Okay. There we go. Are you there, Kelly? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? I can hear you. I guess my camera's just broken. No. Oh. So um, I print out the the shipping printout, like the where it says, do you want to print your shipping label? Mm -hmm. I print two of those copies and I include one of those in the um, envelope with the book and I keep mm -hmm. one for myself. And I think that's what everyone's saying is helpful because it has due date, it has loaning library, it has receiving library. So if something is lost mm -hmm. in the mail, we know where it's going. And then yeah. also if you don't get a shipping um, return label, you can cut it out and make your own shipping return label. So that's what, I don't know what the piece of paper is called to describe it to you, but. It looks. That one is probably the like shipping this, label. This. Yeah. yeah. So there's this the book now. strap and the shipping. And label. the ILL yeah. code in there is just the code for the transaction number. It's not the it's not the barcode for the book. 
Right. So that barcode, if you scan it, will pull up the Clover request number. Well, okay. it can be, though, for your, in your ILS as well. If it's a book your system owns, then no. It's just going to be when you look it up in Clover and you scan so it. Talking about this number here? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you can in your ILS make a temporary record and then use that for that item and then use the Clover barcode. And then yeah, then you can check it in. I make temporary records and use the loaning library's barcode. I just clone oh. it. Oh, we, when we make the temporary records, we actually use that, uh, the Clover request number for ours. Because oh, that's really cool. we can scan it um, if we have that, but also it's just really easy to type in the number. Yeah. So the I can digits. work in both systems as I like mark it returned in Clover. I could check it in in Verso. Yes. Same. All right. Yeah. Okay. I Again, I think people should go with whichever strategy works best for them. Um, when you say because... lender's barcode, do you mean the item? barcode isn't that like checking it in or out of the other library i think I'm a little, if, if you're sharing share the same, the ILS. same like, ils when i create like a temporary barcode in my like in my computer system in opals i use uh, whatever barcode is on the book right but you don't have a the, shared catalog well you might, and, then, and then when the book is returned the barcode magically disappears well, yeah, because you have a different system. Like that's the ILL is designed differently in Opals um, with checking in and out. And also may not, you're not borrowing maybe from your other, if there are other libraries on your system. I have uh, experience using that format and I there's intra. Um, like a temporary record. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think just the Clover one, she borrows through Clover because I'm pretty sure she only has her library on this Opal's system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Whereas that so, might not be the case for everything, everyone. Right. Okay. Um, Thank and, thanks. And Tracy, your hand is up. Hi, um, this conversation about using the other library's barcode and um, um, whether or not libraries are on the same ILS reminds me that not infrequently when we go to check in um, our books that have been out on loan through interlibrary loan, they've already been checked in by the requesting library. And mm. we've been wondering whether these are all sort of accidents that are happening at, at the CERC desk and the um, our barcode is getting checked in instead, uh, uh, instead of the um, uh, Clover barcode or whether it's actually part of their procedure that that's how, um, that's how they handle the interlibrary loans in some way. Um, so anyway, uh, just find the conversation interesting. I don't know if there's a way we can find out. Um, yeah. But if sometimes people, it is yeah. by accident, you know, if sure. like other people are checking in the items, but that's why it's helpful to have a bar, you know, a bookstrap on the item so that the staff member maybe who doesn't do ILL or who does do ILL could see it. There are other strategies that other libraries use. Some like have Clover written on the back or they cover the their barcode. It's mm -hmm. so easy for other yeah. people, staff, either in intention or it's volunteers are checking things in and things happen. But it is a problem if you do share the ILS because then it goes into transit. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Totally. And it's like, oh no, you know, we have this not like Catamount. Right. We have this um, electrical yeah. tape that we sometimes put over um, other libraries' barcodes when the bookstrap, say, is not going to fit very well over it. And yeah, I've been contemplating whether we need to just do that on everything that's going out on our own barcodes. Um, one mm -hmm. thing that's nice about the tape is it's reusable. So you can you can peel it all off um, and, and use it over and over. Um, which is, anyway, which thanks. Is good in some ways. Hopefully, yeah. it's not totally irreversible because sometimes people do put adhesive on items, especially those without plastic on them, like mylar mm -hmm. covering, and it does leave residue. Or it is like that. That's not part of our best practices, but I can totally see like blocking that is helpful as well, as long as it's like totally not able to be seen, or it's respecting the library's wishes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and Haley said on occasion that happens here and it's an accident. 
Susan said that's one reason why they use book straps because it obscures their barcode on the book. And Wendy said that sometimes she accidentally checks in a book because the patron took the book strap off and she's distracted by someone in front of her. Um, And Marie said that it still happens there sometimes, but since she started using book straps, it happens a lot less. And she also uses little post-its to cover fellow Vocal Library barcodes um, that are on the inside of a book. And she uses painter's tape on Mylar covers. Oh, Adrian, yeah, adding a note if you accidentally check it in is always helpful. So it sounds like that does just happen on accident. And um, I think people are finding good workarounds to prevent it as much as possible. But if you, if you do accidentally do it, a note never hurts. Okay. And you can gonna... put the butt strap on the back, too. I don't know if that was said or not. Or the... Yeah. In front of Depending the, the on where so the barcode helpful. is. Our barcode no, is stuck is... usually on like the paper, so that wouldn't really work where they put ours, but yeah. No, but you don't um, have the problem. Like if it's inside the book or if it's an able book, for example, mm-hmm. then you don't have it on the back. That's where the problem is. And it's like the when libraries the who have very similar looking labels mm-hmm. um, and you can't really read the, the print as well. Or if you're just going through a lot of things. It's it's so easy to do, but yeah, that, right. so having something on the book is very helpful. So the libraries who take things off, well, you know, or if if they replace yeah. it, maybe that's fine. But it's also it's a like it's hard to print out things, and it's an expense, and mm-hmm. and it's also training in Clover. But once you yeah. learn it, you might you might find it easier than you might think. Um, I was nervous about it at first, but it seems to help out a lot. Yeah, it does sound like book. overall having that book strap on there has cut down on the accidental check-ins and everything. And it has the information a lot of people want. Okay, so I'm going to ask the group, what would you like added to the best practices? Um, because we can add suggested information to include when lending an item is let me add it and it sounds like definitely the due date was the top one that people wanted and Request number was still pretty split, but it was high enough where we can say include if possible. I'm thinking we could limit it to three or four things that we suggest people keep. Due date, request number, return label. We actually have the return label here. So they should be including that already. We could just say suggested information to include when lending an item is the due date and request number or a checkout slip if your ILS prints one. Does that say destination library? Okay. I think, well, there's the goal of also, like, I'm very excited to hear that there are libraries working on, like, reducing paperwork and the sustainability, but, but thinking about, okay, what do we really need? And I mm-hmm. don't want to print out an ILS slip if it's already uh, with my, you know, Clover that has the number, the due date, the, the, the sending and receiving library. Um, not going to print out additional paperwork to try to reduce the, imp- you know, impact. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marie asked, do I have more in details on what the sustainable libraries cohort will be doing for ILLs? No paperwork at all. Maybe the idea of writing the due date and ILL number on the courier labels would help since they'd have to use, they have to use that little piece of paper. Um, From my read through of the comments, it is that they are steering towards no paperwork at all because the due date, the lender and the request number are in the system as long as it has function the way it should and it hasn't like expired and moved on to someone else um i i did like the idea of putting the due date and the ill number on the courier labels 
but I wondered what would happen if you're sending multiple items to one library. You could have multiple labels, but I would ask if people do use the courier labels to write maybe in pencil or so it can pen be usable. Sometimes people use pen or other. I mean, I guess if the stickies is fine, maybe because it's also the or paper nice. or something. Yeah, or something that was that the idea of being sustainable. You know, if you write in pen, you can't erase it. And so right. then we have to recycle it or scratch it out and it doesn't look as great. Um, but if people put that information maybe on the back side, so it's still clear mm -hmm. enough for the people in the front. Oh, but you can Marie. do multiple. Yeah, I yes. Uh, Marie said, how about on our return labels, one label per item with the due date and the number? That would also work. So I think, because you are supposed to include the return label, I like the idea of putting it on your return label. Um, and Noreen also seconds the write in pencil or a post-it flag, which is convenient. So I think, so the what first step Betsy is. Write? Books go astray, I want them to make it home. Make so it's it more about the destination. Well, they have would... to get returned eventually too. So would you oh, have to oh, then write, I don't think you'd have to write the request number again on the book when you send it back um who has their hand up Group locally could try with each other and see how it goes yeah uh, uh maybe they could Michelle. have colored labels <laughs> oh. so, um sorry just in listening yeah. to all of this i'm wondering if um something could be included with the um pdf and the pdf of the labels themselves mm -hmm that it's just one extra sheet that says something like what like the the date or whatever it is you want on the back of the shipping label so that when you print off the set of labels you also have a copy of that and you print front to back uh, mm -hmm. for all of those and then you just have all that information there and you can just write it right in uh, I don't know if so that... like have a space built in for the request number sure. and the due date. Yeah, and whatever okay. else. Is, yeah. The only thing we're necessary. missing is the barcode, but I guess locally the library can solve that. And before we are using like shipping labels or the bookstrap, two different forms, or or keying in the Clover number, we used to make reusable. We used our um, barcodes and put tape over it or kind of laminate it and we we're able mm -hmm. to tape that on and like it was a little bit more reusable that way instead of like always putting a barcode on and then wasting it and like throwing it out or something so there's probably other ways to maybe solve that as well it doesn't have to be but it, it is nice with the autographics you know has the so we can scan right. it in. well i do it continuously make... push them to give us more customization options for the book straps and the shipping labels but um, it's slow moving i don't know if middlebury college is on the, this uh, team's You're call but I don't they, they think can speak. I saw Kat they or print out Rachel. sort of a different label for that looks There's, a little bit differently. And so there might be that more because they use Iliad. Uh, so so it actually pulls information from their ILS and prints it that way. Uh, oh, and Betsy has her hand up too. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I guess I'm obviously never going to stop yelling borrower lender information but aside from that um i guess like i'm also into the reducing paper waste and stuff like that but like i typically on the label when i'm sending something to someone meaning the label that i put in the courier bag i put the date sent lightly in mm -hmm. pencil on the front but if i'm writing information on the back of that label how are people going to reuse the label i guess i feel like if we're like writing stuff on the back then they're going to need to write stuff on the back when they reuse the label. I sort of like the idea of the old bookmarks or something. I don't know, yeah. because now I'm sort of like, how can we cram everything onto one tiny or, thing, but then also reuse it indefinitely? And I just don't. Right, right, right. I don't I see like, how that's going to work. When well, they we just printed put out those good... bookstraps, it took, yeah. you know, like a lot of 
printing out paper is more wasteful than printing out our receipt printer. So right, like, your receipt oh. printer idea was awesome, and I love that. And our receipt printer is not working <laughs> right now. Can I can I say one thing about it, like just quickly to share, if if that's okay? And then I would really, I want to hear what everyone else has to say. Um, so what I found out about the receipt printer, I was a little bit nervous about it because I thought, oh, okay, it's thermal printed, maybe it's going to fade. We're finding most of them we can scan. Um, and so that's been great. But what the inherent vice is brilliant because it's going to eventually fade, you know, patron privacy. This is great. So if it ends up in a landfill, someone's not going to be able to read the information. Although we do try to rip up things. So right. things stay confidential, but that inherent vice is different than a paper. Like, I like that. Out. It totally fades. Uh, like if you put it out in the sun or someone spills water uh, on it. Yeah. That's God. <laughs> so I like that. Was that. Awesome. Um, and if you happen to have um, long fingernails, you can actually scratch information out with your nails. It makes big silver line through stuff. Things I learned working in a grocery store. Um, and I, Wendy put a really great idea in the chat. She said maybe the backside of the shipping label could look like an old due date slip with the request number and due date. And then it would have a lot of lines on it. And it would not have the barcode, but it could still be reused a number of times. You just cross it out and put in the new information. That could work. And Betsy likes that idea too. Yeah. Wendy does not, they don't have a receipt printer. So you don't print out for your patrons just normally with the receipt printer. So. And we don't have one either. So we usually don't do that. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I have a feeling I'm going to be making some mock-ups of new courier labels just to see what we can do. But also I want to see what I can do with the shipping labels in Clover for the libraries that um, are not on the courier. I will say there's a lot of libraries on the courier right now. And we've um, added that to our label. It says uh, courier participants. Like, um, let's see, make sure that patrons, like it's up. Uh, Maybe if I turn off the light. Well, it says up here oh. route to courier. There was some library that was doing that. They were oh, writing the courier and then we'll send it by mail otherwise. But yeah, I thought that that was helpful. Um, it does show up on our patrons and it shows up on the shipping label. It shows up on the other libraries printing it off. But I think it doesn't show up somewhere else. But at least they can see that we're on the courier system. Um, yeah, that's somewhere. nice. And I added that. Um, I did get, just just for people talking about libraries that are on the courier system, um, Craftsbury Academy is on the courier system, and they said people keep mailing them books instead of sending it through the courier. So if, if you receive items back from them in the courier, that's why. Um, okay, so is everyone okay? with the line of suggested information to include when lending an item is due date, request number, borrowing library, or a checkout slip if your ILS prints out this information. Not required, but it's suggested these are the three things that people would most like to have. Oh, and Kelly asks, how do you know if a library is on the courier route? Um, we have the courier schedule and you would just take a glance at that. It's in alphabetical order. I can send you the link. Hang on. Let me get that open. Okay, so I just put the link for the courier page into the chat. So uh, the full schedule and all of the labels and all of the information is there. Perfect. Okay, let me see, there are hands up. Kelly, your hand is up. So as you know, April, I'm helping out at the Jericho Town Library right now while we're waiting for a director. Yeah. And in addition to doing ILLs for the high school, now doing them for the town library and they are on the courier route so I've just been kind of learning as I go 
Right. So I hope everyone gives Jericho Town Library a little forgiveness right now because I'm trying to figure it out. I, I have not heard any complaints and I bet you are doing just fine with all of it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have uh, like any comments on the differences between like being in the school library with the mail uh, only option versus being maybe on the courier system? Like any differences or, or things that are the same that or questions that came up? What I like about the mail is that I don't have to wait for the courier to come. And I can just package everything up and mail it in and out as I need to. So I can stay on top of it and it's really updated. With the courier, I have to wait for them to arrive. Yeah. And I never know what's going to come and go. So it's a little bit harder to stay organized, in my opinion. But I think if I did it that way all the time, I'd probably be fine with it. It just it's a little foreign to me right now. It probably helps with more volume too. Jericho Town Library is tiny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And plus, you and also own, have Deborah Rawson too. But that's under her in Jericho. I also only that's work fine. at the Jericho Town Library three hours a week, so it's a lot to do in three hours. It is. It's all good. Okay. Uh, Lee has her hand up. Lee, I think you're muted. Is there a way when you go to look, say you look up a book and all the libraries that own that book come up, mm -hmm. tell which ones are on the courier right then, if you don't remember? There is not. Okay. Um, you should be able, I'm pretty sure you have the preferred lender list set up, so it should go and pull any library with that matching ISBN and it will move all of the courier libraries right to the top. Oh, okay. But no, there's no indication um, when you're looking at the search results, which ones are courier libraries. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> That's okay. It's a lot of libraries to remember. Right. Well, there's also the preferred lender list, so the system on the back end will prioritize the courier yeah. libraries, which is part of the agreements of being part of the couriers to target those libraries first. Yeah. So that is one way to help. Um, and Wendy's hand is up. I was, um, and maybe, maybe this is just because, you know, we're a small library and we, but I, the, 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 the information included about the borrowing library and the lending library mm -hmm. is right there when you get the envelope. So yeah. when I, I mean, when I have my bag right there, I know it came from, it's, it's coming to me and I, because of the label, the return label, I know who the lender is. Right. So it's, it's kind of, and, and like I said, and this, this might be just me talking from, I'm the only person that handles the envelope. I'm the only person that'll handle that bag. It's not, you know, a lot, or it's either me or Sarah. And so we are the, we know where the, where it's coming from. We right. know who the lender is. Um, so I'm not really understanding why we would need that information. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't have it. I'm just saying, I don't really understand. It seems almost like a redundancy. I think the only time that including the lender information that's not redundant is um, if they don't include a return label and if they, for some reason, don't have any kind of ownership stamp in their books. But I find that happens rarely. Okay. Okay. I just, yeah, I'm just like, ah, more stuff. We're trying to streamline. I, yeah, I think the um, adding the lender, if it's not in a return label, is helpful, especially if you're dealing with multiple multiple requests for the same title yeah it's i you know i'm not i'm i'm not the it's um yes i believe that we should try to reduce and reuse however that's really not my mm -hmm. <laughs> mine is more reduce than the amount of work that we have to do mm -hmm. <laughs> not not it doesn't matter about the paper for me right now it's it's streamlining the work for for sarah and i to get right. through the day because there's only two of you. Yeah. 
Yes. But if, you know, if a, if a library is bigger and they have, you know, different departments handling, maybe they have an incoming department and an outgoing department. And so I also understand that, you know, maybe that happens too, but yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure why, you know, why somebody would need that, you know, the borrower and lender information on that receipt. So. Um, and having the borrower included sometimes helps if it was mislabeled and sent to the wrong library, yeah. which does happen with uh, Brandon and Bradford still on a pretty regular basis. And that's when we call you. Yes. <laughs> I am always happy. Those are like the easiest mysteries I have to solve in a day. So I'm always happy to look those up. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to add to this. There. That way we know that we reviewed it and updated it. Um, in August, I may have us do like a very big review of this and review the interlibrary loan code again um, since we will have our in-person meeting in August. Uh, and oh okay um, catching up on the chat. Gary says they use the two-sided um, courier labels and the borrowing library can turn it around when it's time to return their loaned items. Wendy wishes the courier was as quick as the mail. Some days it is, some days it is not. Um, Betsy says she uses the borrower lender info to get the item back on its way rather than just sending it back to the owning library if it's missorted. Um, Adrian said it's nice to solve mysteries locally. It really is. I, it, I love solving the book mysteries. It's like that moment when you find a missing book on the shelf because it was like misshelved. I love finding those. Um, Susan said that they get their pile of pouches and the first thing they do is just empty them and deal with the books. So having the information with the books and not on the courier label makes more sense to her. Um, and Betsy agrees about solving the mysteries locally. Um, Haley is hopping off and Renee may join us after. Okay. So we've made our modifications to the Interlibrary Loan Best Practices. Again, this document gets emailed to the ILL listserv automatically every six months. So the full text is in the email and the link to the document is there. So the next time that will get sent out uh, is actually the end of June. So everyone will be able to see that. Um, the only other agenda item was the talking about adding paperwork to other library items which we kind of covered some of it where people will put their own book straps over it um but the example was if a lender sends a book strap that is just loose is it okay to attach it um generally i would think if you want to attach it it's okay as long as it's not taped directly to the book um, I did have someone send me an angry email once because someone had put reusable labels directly on their books and then it took them a long time to peel those off. So it just goes back to the, um, interlibrary loan best practices, which is if it's included with the book, send it back. Um, so maybe the rule is like, send it as it came as best as possible. I know again, like some yeah. libraries are larger, having incoming, outgoing, or we have two people that work on it. Sometimes I tackle the bin, sometimes my colleague tackles the bin, or we share, or we like divvy it up. But, like, so it could be not necessarily the same person handling it both yeah. in, when it comes in and when it goes out. Um, but to return it, like, I guess the golden rule or treat your books yeah to, or the platinum rule of treat the books <laughs> as they want to be treated um or or items um to be respectful um oh uh and kelly said it would be great if all libraries had their email address in the participant record yes it would it would make it a lot easier some days um or to update yeah, that every will. year 
yeah, or something like a reminder. Sometimes you have someone who leaves and then no one ever changes the email yeah. address. And then you're sending out emails and then they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I think that was in my New Year's interlibrary loan checklist, but maybe I'll just send that out every six months too. But I can include in the notes for this meeting, please check your participant record and make sure that your email is there. Okay. Um, Noreen said that when the paperwork comes loose, she doesn't have a place to store it. So sometimes she puts it in the um, jacket before she puts on the book strap. So Noreen, you must use your own book strap. So you just store it inside of the book. That's actually kind of nice. Or we um, store it with oh. alphabetically by last name of the patron. We do have a file system. We'll just mm -hmm. put it in, like last name A, put in a extra, we'll, we'll bundle it together with a paper clip. Yeah, that's what um, we but use actually, but we just have it in an accordion file um, and we put it alphabetically by book title. Yeah, but, but like thinking okay. about like ways to reduce. And if you're putting your own bookstrap in, I bet that helps hold the paperwork from the lending library in also. And Marie, that is a good timing. Uh, she said uh, maybe send a reminder in late August to capture any school changes. I will do that. Okay. All right. Oh, and Marie said that um, she also does that with the paperwork, or she uses their paperwork as the back of the book strap, and she just tapes it right to the their paperwork. And Wendy says she has a, a binder for their lending ILLs and attach it to the paperwork. Okay. I was thinking about something like Wendy's with like having a binder with like all different um, the plastic sheet and where you can still have it alphabetical mm -hmm. perhaps um, to arrange the patron's last name and then you can put all the paperwork in there and maybe bundle it together with a paper clip. Um, mm -hmm. So something I'm thinking about. That's, that's what we do um, also for when we borrow items because when we get the return label, we just staple it right to the paperwork, store it by title, then we can send it back. Yeah. Okay, that seems like a pretty popular approach based on the chat. Okay, so lots of creative solutions for loose paperwork. Um, I am happy to talk about paperwork for the next 55 minutes. Um, but I did want to check and see if anyone had any other topics they wanted to talk about this meeting. Tracy. Hi. Um, if this topic would be of interest to any others, um, we were wondering over here, sort of what is the suggested next step when um, um, books don't come back or they come back damaged and uh, we are not able to reach a resolution with the requesting library. Mm -hmm. um, is there another uh, step that's recommended or do we just simply eat the cost of the book? Um, so what I have done is, it depends on which library. If once I had a school library that never, they damaged something, but they sent it back and no one was responding and I ended up actually emailing the invoice to the principal and that got a response. Um, I'm not sure what everyone else does. Like if you never get a response, I, I think most places end up having to eat the cost, but you can also suspend that library as a borrower. So you would treat them as any other borrower and suspend their privileges until the bill is paid or the item is replaced. OK, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I've printed out, you know, next time that the library has requested something, I've included a printout about we need this item back or 
you could do whatever you want, you know, invoice or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, if we're getting multiple books, but not back, then yeah, maybe suspend a note on the record. Yeah. Uh, Marie. Mail. I have a question about renewal requests. Occasionally mm -hmm. I will get a renewal request like weeks before the actual due date. And then I don't oh. know what to do with that. Like, do I date it the renewal six weeks or five weeks, whatever, from the request date? Or like, I'm not sure the, what the expectation is. Huh. Is the due date in Clover different than what the due date not, um, in the ILS usually. is? I can't okay. say that I'm perfect, but I don't think usually. I mean, I myself have one where I requested a renewal and I got a note. I, the renewal was rejected and said this isn't due until May 30th and then it just sits in rejected renewal and they can try again um, You so I think the options are if you're okay with renewing it you could put a reminder in the notes that this is the due date and then just leave it there because it would just sit in renewal anyway or you can reject the renewal and Put a reminder note in there that says when it's due. I, they would have seen that anyway, but those are two approaches. Okay. But either way, I would definitely put a note that just says this isn't due until this time. I'm wondering if sometimes people might um, be meaning to click return and accidentally click renewal instead. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. And then also that could be best practices like... Um, it's recommended you ask for a renewal a couple days before or like a week before or something closer to the mm -hmm. due date than further away. Um, it also oh, depends on like how sure. long a library wants an item out of their library. Maybe that they would only grant two weeks like to the second, you know, right. or they might want to customize it or or you can write in the borrower's notes like, oh, we need this actually for a book club. You know, sometimes people overlook that you need a little bit extra time. Yeah, um, but if you are getting a renewal request and it's not due for like another three weeks, um, you can add lender's notes and just hit submit without changing the status, and that will save your notes in there so that when they go to look at it, it's they'll be able to see oh, that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good to know. Thanks, April. Yeah. Um, Wendy. Yeah, I was just going to add that there are times when people don't, like when I will request books for a book club and I will say I need a date that is, you know, May 15th or later. And I then I'll get a, a book that they just checked out and not paid attention to the request mm -hmm. of the date. So mm -hmm. at first what I was doing as I was just writing to them immediately and saying, I, I, can we re can we renew this because of that? And now I'm not doing that. Now I'm now I'm actually just um, I'm just letting the due date come and then hitting you know request renewal mm -hmm. because because my note is still there <laughs> right what, yeah book club could I have a due date of so yes and we did run into that trouble with um, out of state we had someone requesting for their book club from out of state and they asked me why the due date was coming up so fast and they said well we put a note they said we need this extended due date and I said well we did put that note in the out of state one but they didn't read it but you yeah. can request a renewal <laughs> so we did process that but or they did yeah. read it and they chose not to accept that for whatever also reason possible well um, but if they if they send it to me and they haven't if they send it to me and that note is there and and that and I've seen that the note is now moved up to right where that that date is mm -hmm. so that you know where your due date is so if they're not reading the note and they send it to me then i'm just going to assume that i can have it yeah until that date i don't know if that's good though i don't think that's a good pr procedure though because it, that's not respecting the lender's due date whether they were intentional or not i mean sometimes people don't know how clover works perhaps or they don't know how to advance the date or or they want it to be to their ILS, you know, four weeks or whatever, and they don't like that as a choice. Non-response is a response, but it could be in a in intention. So I don't know if you should presume that 
things are okay to keep longer. I think if you've put in the renewal request and they haven't responded, then you That's get right. to assume that you right, get to right. keep it. That's longer. different. Like if they oh, well, yeah, I'm still way. I'm still putting a renewal request in. Yeah, yeah. I'm not just I'm I'm not just like letting it sit there. I'm still requesting. But when my patrons are freaking out that it needs to get in earlier, I'm like, don't don't worry, don't worry. Nine we times out renew. of ten, I, yeah, we can renew it. It's not a problem. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, uh, and Kelly did ask, should we wait until it is overdue before we request a renewal? Um, I usually say, I, I mean, I do request after it's overdue sometimes, but anytime where it's like a week away from the due date, just not like three weeks away from the due date. Uh, Noreen said she just requests the renewal when it comes up. And she said new people sometimes may miss the note if you ask for an extended date. Um, and Marie said that she loves when people specify a date for the book club books. So it is very appreciated when you do. Um, and Veronica has her hand up. Hi, yeah. Oh. Veronica Hi. Uh, at the Chelsea Public Library here. Um, I am definitely one of the ones who requests a renewal early. And so I'll tell you the circumstances under which that happens. Because I am a solo library director, it's just me and I'm every department. Um, if a patron comes in and says something like, uh, I see the due date on this ILL, I'm going to be away. Can I take it with me? And so I need to sort of know if the due date's going to be extended. Also, there's no way that I'm going to remember to submit a renewal in two weeks, right, which is a few days before the due date. Like, there's just no way. I'm just too busy. And so, you know, however long people want to extend the renewal date when I submit a renewal is fine. It's just informative to me and then it's informative to my patron. So that those are the types of circumstances where patrons would like to know that their mm -hmm. renewal is being extended for whatever reason. Okay, that makes sense. I had not thought of that. Okay. Anybody else? We've been a very chatty group today and that makes me really happy. Wait, we didn't talk about the single-sided or double-sided labels or oh. color, um, um, like why people do that, like the pros and cons. Um, Gary said that they do double-sided because that way when you're returning it, you could just flip it over and slide it in. And then um, someone else said it could increase chances for error. So like if you're yeah. doing things quickly and you flip it. So there's pros and cons, you know. Sometimes I, it I works, wanted sometimes to it dig doesn't. into the responses to see just how many people mentioned the double-sided ones before I did a lot. There were a couple that said they don't use them because they sometimes accidentally put the wrong side out. Um, or you have other libraries on the other side. By yeah, or they grab the wrong double-sided one and send it back to the wrong library if they file them um, to reuse later. Or some uh, libraries have a different bin number. We've had to add it. Yeah, if the bin number has like changed. Um, Betsy said the other issue with the double-sided is that uh, we wouldn't be able to add information to the back. And Wendy said she gets a lot of double-sided with the wrong library on the back. And I think it's because I don't know about other people. When we get the return label, we'll often just file it in for that library. And when it's going back to that library, we just pull out one from the drawer for it. So I think it depends on how we save the return labels. Um, let's see. Trying to see how many other people mentioned it. A lot of people mentioned that they use single-sided labels. Um, there was a couple of people that mentioned the color labels and they were worried that it meant something. And I think it just makes them more noticeable. So, yeah. Okay. So I think one thing I'm going to do is hopefully... 
parse out some of the information and include that in the meeting summary as well. Uh, Kelly said she slides the return label in the window behind the destination label, which is, uh, I think, what most people, a lot of libraries do that. And there's sometimes confusion on that, although it was very helpful. We did have a book that came back to us that we were like, what is this? You know, like what library is this from? There's no stamps on it. Well, it turns out and no barcode also. It was our book uh, <laughs> and it wasn't active learning that I guess the barcode must have fell off. And it was an older book that we didn't look at it. We presume that all of our, you know, we have our stamps and stickers and but this was an older art book that hadn't circulated in a while. And yeah, so that was very helpful that library did tuck in and they didn't have to do that, you know, also because it was, they were sending it back to us. So they didn't have to include their return label, but that did give us a clue that, oh wait, who can we ask? And then we found out it's us. Right. <laughs> so, happy. <laughs> so, um, but the other thing we didn't talk about the courier labels was the due date um, the, for the courier or that's helpful. I mean, the ship date mm -hmm. and anecdotally that is helpful because then we can see, okay, how fast did it come? Okay. Five, two. Okay. That's been a week or something or, you know, or, or, oh, five, eight. Wow. That really came really quickly. And then we can note those libraries, right. um, but it's not required. And it used to help the courier more maybe, um, but it is kind of like a fast way. So I do pay attention to that when I go through the bin and some libraries do not do that. Maybe time or they don't know the purpose, but, but yeah. Um, oh, uh, one thing I did want to mention is that um, one comment I spotted was that if you are sending a book to a shared stop, um, they said it's helpful to sometimes just stick even a post-it to the book that says which library it is for, because sometimes things get stuck for multiple libraries in one bag, and then they have to, like, they come to pick up their bags and they take away the ones with their labels but it turns out there was you know two libraries worth in that one bag so for when they are sorting they said that um just having a little post on the inside helps them with that and, and you said or highlight the library name on the courier label they said it uh is mostly helpful for when they don't use the partner labels which has their library name. Wait, so it's not helpful to highlight the, so like you have no, the No, that is library. helpful. But oh, like okay. if you were sending something to Reading and every once in a while someone just pulls the Heartland Library label and sticks things for Heartland and for Reading in there oh, no. and puts it in there, so. No, yes. that, that is a lot more work on that library. Um, they shouldn't have to do that to separate that. I can see what they're thinking like, oh, it's all going to one place, but they're not mm -hmm. at the other end where they're not a hub library. They may not understand that experience. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also have a question about that when on return, because we also had combined, like, I think it, I, I won't say what library it was, but they did combine in the same bag, which I think could be. From multiple libraries? Yeah, and I think it was because a library was concerned about getting an item. Or... Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> it must be the my the race is clouding my brain today, <laughs> <laughs> making all these mistakes. It's hard to think through this. I mean, like there, this is complex. Every it library is. kind of does its own systems. Um, they're trying to follow the code, but they're limited by staffing capacity, time, energy, resources, and then thinking through all these things like, well, it works great for this library, but not so great for that library. And like, what's a good rule? What is an exception? What could it work with? Why the ILL code is somewhat <sighs> vague, but is a requirement. And then the best practices oh. is do this Any if you can, please, because it's very helpful. 
yeah to other libraries who may be doing mm -hmm. things that yeah um oh, it, but uh, you need almost to be a lawyer you know reading some of this like don't attach this <laughs> to the book well do you mean it's okay with the plastic or do you mean just like if it's without a plastic and it shouldn't be you know it's fixed you know like you have to like kind of read it with legal it's the next eyes. generation staples versus tape yeah <laughs> Um, and Noreen asked if anyone can use some purple bags because she has too many and they will go out next Wednesday. Uh, if you anyone has extra bags, you can always send them to us. Um, if you need extra bags, just send an email to the listserv. We will get them out. We have three stops a week. Um, I think Tammy in Springfield has claimed the purple bags. But yes, if you ever have too many bags, just send them back to us and we store them and we send them out. Um, and if you end up with broken bags, you can send those to us too. That might be helpful to put out in the listserv as well as maybe, I don't know how you want to approach it, but annually, periodically, as needed, um, because there are people who, for whatever reason, cannot attend the roundtable. Maybe they're catching the mm -hmm. recording, or they're not thinking that this is valuable information, or that processes and are discussed and perhaps updated. And it's good to have a hand in it. But some libraries feel like, oh, okay, I've got a system; it works. Why I don't need to change or participate? That seems unnecessary, but. So maybe right. promoting this as well, but like that might be the only way to get the information out because you say it now, return the bags to that are falling apart. Sure, we all take note of that, although there's a lot of stuff covered in this meeting, so <laughs> reminders are always helpful. <laughs> but yeah, it's some people do not participate and they're not getting the messages or maybe they're reading listserv, so at least you can catch them that way. Right. But not everyone reads listserv maybe or doesn't have the time to. It's true. I, I try to get it out on the listservs um, as often as possible, but maybe just some regular reminders would be good. I do send out the reminder to send in courier stats, so we can work on some more. Yeah. All right. Um, anyone mm -hmm. else? Oh, Marie brought up the vacation reminder as we head into summer. And that reminds me that I need to send that. I used to have a recurring reminder on my calendar and I think it fell off. Yes. It's hard to know also when to use that re vacation reminder because today we are close to the public because we're setting up for an event here this evening and so technically I'm not doing, I, I am here at the round table, but other than that, I'm not doing interlibrary loans today. So I'm not mm -hmm. checking Clover. So I was thinking, well, maybe I should put up, like we're not available, but what will happen is that items that we could supply will pass by our library and we'll lose out on that opportunity to share our collection. We always wanted to increase that number so we can be um, good uh, part of the community. Um, but it is like, yeah, but I will get it. So ours only sits for two days, but some libraries have a lot longer maybe. So it's, it'll expire, you know, soon. So right. it's not like, a, it's, so it's better to leave it without the vacation, even though by concept you think like I am away from my desk, I'm not checking. So maybe it's my, not just for pending requests, but it could be helpful for other reasons. I don't know. My approach is um, one day is okay. If it's mm -hmm. a Monday or a Friday, then I definitely use the holiday dates because we're not open on the weekends. So if it's more than oh. one day or if it's a Monday, Friday for us. You mean you do for a whole year? No. No, oh. for um, if we're, if we, well, oh, I holiday. do, I do put the full holiday list in like mm -hmm. after January, I go through and put in all of the state holidays mm -hmm. that are Mondays or Fridays so that um, those weekend. are on hold, but yes. So that it can go to other libraries and so they can fulfill it perhaps faster. Yes. Um, yeah, so it, it's not really um, a any big deal, I guess, vacations. one day. But yeah, yeah. if there's staff vacation, like if I went away for... If it's like a week. Tuesday, I don't put the holiday dates in because we can fill it on Monday or Wednesday. But um, we had a question. Do we talk at all about due dates? 
Uh, Beth and Farrelly, she thought the best practice was six weeks. So the best practices does suggest a due date that is 45 days out. Um, it's not a requirement. It's just a suggestion. This this works great for travel time, borrowing time. Um, so best practices suggests 45 day checkout periods. Yeah, but up to the lending library. It is I, up to the lending library. Uh, we're in Vocal of Koha, and ours is 42 to match. Mm -hmm. So we're close, but it would just not work. It's just easier to have that automated. Um, yes. yes. Um, if oh you God, do get something that's four weeks, um, a lot of times you can definitely get renewals because that is a shorter period. Myrna, your hand is up. Um, hi. So um, I don't usually, and maybe I'm wrong doing this, I don't usually pay attention to when a book is due. Usually the system tells me and I stamp it. And when I get it, great. If I don't get it, I and it's been a long time, and I usually find out because somebody may want that book, then I'll try to figure out where it is. And and I have recently a person who has borrowed a couple of books in interlibrary loan and she just wrote me to say an emergency came up and she's out of the state uh, taking care of a, someone who's sick. So I hope that it's okay to us to renew those books. Um, and I told her, I think the only thing it just shows up in some statistics that we are returning the books late, but I don't know that there's any other repercussions. Uh, I mean, generally, I think that everyone is happy when the books come back eventually. Um, if you are requesting a renewal, because you, if, if it's overdue, then you should request a renewal or try to get it back from the patron. But if the patron is having an emergency, it's never a bad idea to say like, Patron had emergency. We're trying to get it back, but um, just that way they know that yes, we are aware this is overdue, and it will be coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. So it looks like a lot of people are saying in the chat that they usually set the due date six weeks from their ship date except for very, very new items. And Susan said sometimes they get books that were due before we even receive them. And I have had that happen with some out-of-state ones where they bounce around in USPS for a, a good long while. Um, yeah, I think that for the next time the best practices go out automatically, then I can also make sure to highlight the suggested um lending period that reminds me to look at ours too sure with this with the state loans the able books are out much longer and mm -hmm. we have a patron that is very interested in a large print item that's not commonly held and we have to either if we want to go in state that's the we have to wait a very long time mm-hmm um, we could go out of state, um, but it's nice to be able to source it on the courier and in state. And so it is. So, yeah, those long due dates. I, yeah, well, I think some of it is because they'll lend whole collections at a time to different libraries. They do the like bulk lending. They'll lend a large print collection. Oh. Oh, so it might be out. At, yeah, so we do mm -hmm. have a rotating collection here. So mm -hmm. maybe it's at a library. A lot of times that's um, it. Um, Trudy, your hand is up. When you get a renewal from the borrowing library, mm -hmm. how long do you in generally renew the book for? I renew it for an, an, another checkout period, which I think ours is set at four weeks or five weeks. 
But I oh, just, okay. we have our checkout period and our renewal period are the same time length. Okay, thank you. I, I think some people have longer checkout periods and then like a shorter renewal period, but we just have the same time setting. Uh, and Myrna, your hand is still up. Oh, and it's gone. Okay. Uh, oh, more chat. Oh, yep. Beth likes the lending collection, the rotating collection from Abel. It's a it's a great service. And Wendy and Sarah make amazing collections. All right. And anybody else? Okay. Oh, I have a hand. Uh, Kelly. Just one last thing. Um, our school, my last day at school is um, June 20th. Mm -hmm. So if anybody mails books back to me after that date, I won't be here to check them in. Okay. So I feel like they'll just, people will be wondering if we've received them and Clover won't be updated till I'm back here in the end of August. Is that uh, okay? I don't know how else to do it. That's fine. You may want to send an email to the ILL listserv just saying that, um, you know, the library closes on this day. So if things are mailed back after that, then it will not be checked in until August. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah. Also, could it be possible? I don't know how many loans you have and how much of a hassle this would be, but in Clover, in the borrowers or the lenders notes, you could write a handwritten note or write type a little note saying that um, if this item is sent after, it will be checked in in August or like you can copy and paste. But yeah, if yeah. you have a lot of loans, that would be a hassle. But like if you just had a few, like if you went into Clover and searched like um, what's being sent out, um, what's received at another library, looking I, at the like status. The, and, yeah, the, the last book, the last book that I sent out just a couple days ago, I put a note in there just saying, FYI, I'm only here till June 20th as far as getting this book back to me. Yeah, but and I can do that. I only have like 15 books. I mean, so is I it can... important for your library to get it back before? I mean, for inventory, of course, but, you know, for those reasons. But um, could it come back in August? Because then maybe the, the, the receiving library will be kind of confused. Like, should I get back sooner than the due date or should do I have until August? Or there might be some confusion of like what's OK with you. Um, OK. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd like to get it back just so everything's tidied up before I leave. Um, is is but... the due date set before the end of the school year? Um, they, they should be back. Like, I'm not positive. I'd have to double check. Yeah, but, yeah. You may just um, you may want to use holiday dates now or in the next week or so, since that would also um, stop requests from coming in. That would be do after the day that you close or mm -hmm. um would have a short lending period if you wanted the due date before you close for the summer yeah i shut it down today so oh, no more see. requests coming in yeah yeah but i'll but make I a think... note i'll make a note in the lenders um notes that's perfect yeah and i think about that too when i loan to school libraries you know maybe the due date is a little bit longer just because that's how it's set in clover or whatever but it we can include a note saying we need this back before the end of the school year that's also helpful for the school librarian to know i think that they can work on getting that back from that student that school year just in case that student mm -hmm. graduates or doesn't come back next year or just to square things away at the end of the year or if let's say the student doesn't return it then we can resolve it with the school before the end of the school year whether it has to be replaced or paid for um that would be so i try to be mindful of that but i think that public libraries perhaps or maybe university or college libraries may not be thinking about that you know that the the, the school that k through 12 might be a little bit different um like operating schedule um so i think that would be helpful to help but but no one's thinking oh unless you have kids maybe or something like that or work in a school 
but you're not okay. thinking about June you know, 20th is the last day, like as a public library, we're year round, you know? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Those final school dates are getting set now. We just got the notice for ours. Do you have a lot of makeup days for your kids or? I think they got a waiver. We thought they were gonna have a half day on the Monday. Um, and that one got dropped and school actually ends on a Thursday now. So that was nice. Mm. All right, anyone else? This has been very helpful, April, I think. Having uh, like the data, okay. yeah. So Wendy asked if there's a way to automate the end date for schools. And I think that I could have Autographics bulk update, but there are some schools that stay staffed through the summer. So I have at least a good handful that still lend. Um, or send out to the school library listserv, perhaps like have the school librarians say like when's the last day or if they're open, then that information could be forwarded as a like we could see all the libraries perhaps or the problem is that the um the visla listserv is only for visla members so oh, if right. a school it's librarian did not join visla then they're not in there so there's not really an easy way to reach mm -hmm. every school librarian um but i will make a push for the vacation holiday dates and also um for at least the first couple weeks of summer, if you notice that you have any requests that are kind of hanging around at a school library for a while, let me know because then I usually try to check in. I can move the request along, but I also like to check in with the school librarian and see if they're there or if they need help with the holiday dates. And um, I mean, it gives me a good excuse to connect with some of the school librarians too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before I forget, let me remind you for our next Interlibrary Loan Roundtable, we are meeting in August on Thursday, August 10th. It is 10 a.m. to noon, and it will be in person. Um, there will likely be no streaming for that one because it's hard to wrangle the in-person and virtual world. And I am hoping that it will be nice weather and we will be able to find a space out in the world that has both more parking than us um, and is maybe just like a nice outdoor covered space. It is Thursday, August 10th, Noreen, and that one will be um, 10 a.m. to noon. So it'll swap back to the morning. And we want to keep that in the morning instead of like, let's say the afternoon where people could just go home afterwards. But I guess depending on what library and schedules and um, I understand well, why we just, alternate because of, so we can access, different people can yeah. access it. Um, but I'm thinking for uniquely the in-person that if people are going to the Department of Libraries or wherever meeting, they need to plan to go back to their library perhaps, or they have to take the rest of the day off, or I don't I know, think, just thinking out loud about end of the day versus first thing. Right. But then people I think go for to lunch now together, we're gonna perhaps. keep it. Yeah, that is because everyone likes the meeting up and the networking and the seeing in person. So um, yes, I think for now we're gonna keep it in the morning, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I still have to figure out the exact location and everything. So for now it will stay in the morning and we will see how it goes. Susan said she prefers morning meetings. Um, Beth said morning is okay. So it, it depends. Um, but yeah, all right. So I will hopefully see all of you in person in August. It's going to be great to see everyone again. Um, and if you do have any interlibrary loan questions, any trouble with Clover or the Courier, always reach out to me. I am, I love problem solving and I love questions. So send them my way.
And if you have any agenda items, send me those too. Thank you so much, April. Thank 